Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at vestigial sideband modulation which is basically a form of upper sideband or single sideband modulation in which the filter is non-ideal. And let us look at the properties of this non-ideal VSB filter. So, we are looking at the property of this VSB filter and uh, let us say this has impulse, this has spectrum HF, correct? this non-ideal VSB filter has spectrum HF which as we already said it has, it is a high pass filter, but it is not an ideal high pass filter. So, it has a finite transition band, correct. So, this is minus F C and this band, these two bands, these are your transition bands, correct? Where it is rising from, where the impulse there, where the response is lies between 0 and 1 that is rising from 0 to 1 that is known as the transition band and this is a non-ideal high pass filter, correct? Non-ideal high pass filter at with cutoff frequency Fc. This is a, uh, let me just write it again clearly, this is a non-ideal high pass filter. As we already said, we prefer this non-ideal high pass filter, we prefer this because designing ideal high pass filters or implementing ideal high pass filters has a very high complexity, okay, require a large number of stages to implement the ideal high pass filter and so on. Whereas, this non-ideal high pass filter can be implemented with relatively lower complexity, all right. So, this is preferred in a practical implementation, okay. So, let us look at uh, a schematic for vestigial sideband modulation, okay. So, we have our signal M T, which is as usual modulated with cosine 2 pi f c t first, because remember we are using the frequency discrimination, okay. Frequency discrimination technique except that we are using non-ideal. So, it is modulated cosine 2 pi f c t. So, let us write this over here. That is cosine 2 pi f c t to generate m t cosine 2 pi f c t and that is passed through your linear time invariant system with impulse response h t or that is your non-ideal high pass filter. impulse response H T and spectrum H F and this is basically the output. So, naturally the output here will be this is basically your M T cosine 2 pi F C T convolved with H T because your modulated signal M T cosine 2 pi F C T is passing through the non-ideal high pass filter with impulse response H T. Therefore, the output is M T cosine 2 pi F C T convolved with the impulse response, okay. So, this is the convolution, okay. So, that should be clear. This is your convolution operation, Okay, which in the frequency domain means and then for the frequency response of this of the output frequency response of the output is 
that is the Fourier transform in the frequency domain is the Fourier transform of m t cosine 2 pi f c t with multiplication because convolution in time domain this becomes your multiplication. Okay. So, that is also something that you are must be very familiar with at this point. So, this is this becomes a your simple product let us write product instead of multiplication. Okay. And now, the Fourier transform of m t cosine 2 pi f c t that is also something that we are very familiar with that is half m f minus that is Fourier transform m f shifted to f c and m f shifted to minus f c. So, the Fourier transform of m t cosine 2 pi f c t this is equal to half m f minus f c plus half m f plus f c. So, the net Fourier spectrum of the output. So, spectrum of the output of the VSB modulated signal, the spectrum of the VSB modulated signal is half m f minus f c plus half m f plus f c times times h f. Okay. So, this is basically the spectrum, let us call this as x f. If we call this signal as x t here, the V s b modulated signal as x t, this is our V s b vestigial side band modulated. If x t is the vestigial side band modulated signal, let us say it has spectrum x f that is this x t has spectrum x f. So, output signal x t V s b modulated signal x t where x f x t has spectrum x f and that x f is given by this that x f is given by this that is half m f minus f c plus half m f plus f c that is the spectrum of m t cosine 2 pi f c t multiplied by h f which is the spectrum of the non ideal high pass filter okay which has a transition band around fc okay now at the receiver consider demodulation at the receiver we have your xt which is the received signal this is again demodulated by passing through by demodulating with your cosine 2 pi f c t and that gives rise to the output signal. Okay. So, let us call this output signal as r t with spectrum let us say r t is the output of demodulator that has spectrum r f. Okay. So, r t this is the output of this is the output of the demodulator. Okay. So, this is basically R t and C R t is basically your x t times cosine 2 pi f c t and therefore, R t is basically demodulated x t times cosine 2 pi f c t. Therefore, its spectrum is naturally half x f minus f c plus half x f plus f c. Okay. So, this so x t cosine 2 pi f c t its spectrum is half x f minus f c plus half 
x f plus f c. Now, substitute for x f. Now, in this what we are going to do is substitute. So, if we call this, this is the spectrum for x f, okay, spectrum of output that is x f. So, if we call this as equation 1. Now, what we are going to do is substitute for that is equation 1 tells us that x f is half m f minus f c plus half m f plus f c into h f. Substitute that spectrum expression for the spectrum x f in this expression for uh, the spectrum r t. Okay. So, by the way this is r f that is a spectrum of output. Okay. This is the spectrum of output of spectrum of output of spectrum of the output of the demodulator that is equal to half okay and uh, instead of xf minus fc i'm going to substitute that expression so xf minus fc is so we have half xf minus fc is half mf minus 2 f c plus half m f uh, m f. So, this is half. So, x f minus f c is half m f minus 2 f c m f plus f c minus f c that is half m f times h f minus f c. Okay, so, this is your basically half x f minus f c plus half now x f plus f c those the, that will be half m f minus f c plus f c. So, half m f plus half m f plus f c plus f c m f plus 2 f c into h f plus f c okay so this is the net expression for now if you look at this now let's write this term by term so this is 1 by 4 mf minus 2 fc into hf minus fc plus 1 by 4 mf into hf minus fc plus 1 by 4 m f into h f plus f c plus 1 by 4 m f plus 2 f c into h f plus f c. Okay, see so these are the four terms that you get from the expansion of the output of the demodulator. So, this is still we are talking about the spectrum of the output signal of the demodulator that is we are talking about the spectrum R f. Now, if you look at this spectrum which we have simplified by substituting the expression for the spectrum of x f uh, that is the spectrum of the x f which is the spectrum of the V s b modulator signal x t. Now, you can see that m f minus f c look at these two m f minus f c and m f plus 2 f c. So, these two components correspond to 2 f c. are centered at 2 f c m f minus f c m f minus 2 f c is m f shifted to 2 f c and m f plus 2 f c is m f shifted to minus 2 f c. So, these two are centered at 2 f c. So, these can be eliminated by low pass filtering hence these can be eliminated by low pass filtering. So, when we eliminate these by low pass filtering only the two other components are going to remain. So, that is the central idea. So, now we are going to low pass filter it. Now, these can be eliminated by LPF, okay. That is your
hence now if we pass this through a low pass filter pass that is pass R T through LPF. So, only these components are going to remain that is 1 by 4 M F into H F minus F C 1 by 4 M F into H F plus F C. So, once you pass this you LPF and let us say you get R tilde F that is output of LPF. So, your R tilde T is output of LPF which is 1 by 4 M F into H F minus F C plus 1 by 4 into M F into H F plus F C. Okay? So, 1 by 4 M F into H F plus F C. And now, if you take M F common, you can see this is 1 by 4 M F into H F minus F C plus H F plus F C. Now, therefore, if we can set this to a constant H F minus F C, so you can see the net output spectrum after low pass filtering is 1 by 4 M F into H F minus F C plus H F plus F C. Now, if you can set this H F minus F C plus H F plus F C equal to some constant in particular, let us say this is 1, then the output spectrum will be 1 by 4 M F, which is basically proportional to the spectrum of empty. That is in fact, the output signal will be 1 by 4 empty. So, if this is equal to 1, then this is simply 1 by 4 M F which in the time domain corresponds to 1 by 4 M T and therefore, we would have recovered our which implies that we have recovered our implies that we have recovered our original we have recovered our original signal empty. But note that the requirement is H F minus F C plus H F plus F C should be equal to 1. So, that is the property that the VSB filter that the non-ideal VSB filter must satisfy. Okay? So, let us look at that property. So, we have H F minus F C. So, VSB filter must satisfy. So, the non-ideal VSB filter must satisfy for recovery, distortionless recovery, non-ideal VSB filter must satisfy the property H F minus F C plus H F plus F C equal to non-ideal. This is the property that your non-ideal VSB filter must satisfy. Okay? So, let us look at this property that the non-ideal VSB filter must satisfy. So, this is your H F correct and uh, or let us look at this this is minus F C So, this is your H F okay. and now what we are going to do is H F minus F C is basically H F shifted by F C. So, H F minus F C is H F shifted that is advanced uh, by F C. So, we have H F minus F C. So, the band uh, okay. So, this is basically your H F minus F C and plus there will be some other component at 2 F C. We are not worried about that. All right? So, we are only worried about this component which is in the base band that is H F minus F C. Now, let us look at H F plus F C 
and if you look at H f plus F c, that looks something like this. So, this is your H f plus F c that is basically your component that is uh, at F c is shifted backward to the 0 frequency that is H f plus F c that is shifted by minus F c that is shifted by F c to the left. Now, when you add these two that is H f minus F c plus H f plus F c the VSB property VSB filter should obey the property that VSB filter must satisfy the property that when you add these two you get you get unity that is you should get unity that is h f minus f c plus h f plus f c equal to 1. So, this is the property that the VSB filter must satisfy. So, this is equal to 1. this is the property that the VSB filter must satisfy. And you can see this property is satisfied if the VSB filter is symmetric about F c that is if you can see if this VSB filter is symmetric about F c that is basically if this is symmetric about F c that is this is uh, let us say F c minus delta F this point is let us say F c plus delta F and then if it is symmetric about F c, then you can see that symmetric about F c in the sense that you can see that this is linear, linearly increasing between F c minus delta F to F c plus delta F the midpoint is at F c. So, if this is symmetric about F c, then this property is satisfied or in other words between F c minus delta F to F c plus delta F this has to be h f equals 1 over you can see this linear part corresponds to 1 over the slope is 1 over that is it is rising. So, this is 1 this is 0. So, slope is 1 over it is rising to 1 in a interval of 2 delta f 1 over 2 delta f times uh, f minus f c plus delta. So, if this property is satisfied that is if this filter H f is symmetric about F c that is it starts from F c minus delta f to F c plus delta f and rises from 0 to 1 linearly then you can see that when you shift H F c to. So, when you consider H f plus F c and H f minus F c and superimpose them or add them in the base band they will sum up to 1. So, the property that you can see the this is the property that the VSB filter filter must satisfy H f minus F c plus H f plus F c equal to 1. One such filter has the response H f equals 1 over twice delta f in F minus F c plus delta f for f c minus delta f less than or equal to f less than or equal to f c plus delta f and h f. So, h f equal to this equal to 0. So, for f less than or equal to f c minus delta f equal to 1 for f greater than or equal to f c plus delta. So, this is one particular filter one particular VSB filter. So, this is one particular filter non ideal one particular ideal filter non ideal HPF non ideal HPF which satisfies VSB property.
Okay, this is one particular uh, non-ideal high pass filter which satisfies the uh, VSB property. All right. So, what we have seen in this module, what we have seen is basically we require that is one can implement a non-ideal version of single side band modulation. All right. In this particular case, we have chosen upper side band modulation, a non-ideal version of upper side band modulation which is termed as vestigial side band modulation with a non-ideal high pass filter. All right. And we have shown if the high pass filter satisfies certain property that is HF minus FC plus HF plus FC is equal to unity, then you can reconstruct correct you can reconstruct this vsb you can reconstruct the transmitted message signal again mt without any distortion by again passing through the demodulator that is demodulating with cosine 2 pi fct at the receiver however the disadvantage of vsb modulation still remains that it requires a slightly larger bandwidth in this particular case you can see that the transition bandwidth is fc minus f uh, delta f to fc plus delta f so it requires a additional bandwidth of delta f all right, which the previous upper side modulation, upper side band modulation scheme did not require. All right, so require a slightly, a slightly larger bandwidth that is uh, FM plus delta F, where FM is the maximum frequency. So previously the upper side band modulation, upper side band modulation required only FM. Correct. Now this requires FM plus FC, which is slightly larger than FM. But of course, it is a trade-off. It allows for uh, a lower complexity in the design of the non-ideal high pass filter. And if this non-ideal high pass filter satisfies this property HFC minus F, uh, HF minus FC plus HF plus FC equal to unity, then that allows the reconstruction of the message signal MT without any distortion by simply demodulating with cosine 2 pi FCT. Now, similar condition can also be derived for the uh, vestigial sideband modulation with the lower sideband that is non-ideal low pass filter all right and I will let you explore that all right. So, we will stop this module here and continue with other aspects in the subsequent modules. Thank you.